So a little over a week ago, I installed Hyperland and I started using Hyperland a little bit on both my home computer as well as sometimes using it a little bit on my office workstation here. Now, the workstation here at the office is an AMD computer. It's got an AMD CPU and GPU. On my home computer, though, I have an NVIDIA graphics card. And NVIDIA on Hyperland has always been a problem until here recently. So, you know, now that the NVIDIA drivers kind of work with Hyperland, you know, I installed it about a week ago and I've been pleasantly surprised and you know I've made uh, some modifications here in the last week the more I play with the config files this is what my Hyperland desktop currently looks like uh, obviously I've spent a little bit of time on the Waybar so Waybar is the panel here at the top of the screen Waybar is essentially Polybar for Wayland uh, if I take a look at my config let's start with the Hyperland config itself so I can show you some changes that I've done to the Hyperland config I haven't done much since that very first video that I made about a week ago. I did day one on Hyperland and for the most part everything is the same. The only big change is by default the Hyperland config had Wofi as the run launcher. Wofi is a Rofi like program except for Wayland. That's why it's called Wofi with a W. But people told me, hey, you know, Rofi works with Wayland. You don't have to use crappy Wofi. Just regular Rofi does work. There's actually a package. I believe it's Rofi Wayland. It's basically a fork of Rofi that is designed specifically for uh, Wayland, but it's exactly like Rofi. It uses your Rofi configs, looks, and functions exactly like Rofi, just regular Rofi. So, that solved a lot of problems. So now when I do all of my uh, DM scripts, my D menu slash Rofi scripts, you know, which I got a million of them, they all look like they've always looked, right? They look exactly the same as when I was using Rofi on all of my X11 window managers. So I'm really happy that Rofi does work because Wofi was bad. Wofi was ugly. It was buggy. It was kind of flaky software. It just wasn't a good run launcher. A matter of fact, I wasn't going to use Wofi after using it for a couple of days. I realized it was so bad. I actually had considered just using Emacs as my run launcher, you know, but uh, thankfully, uh, now that I know that Rofi works on Wayland, I'm just going to use Rofi from now on. Some other things I have here are the auto start section. So when Hyperland first launched, it launches Waybar and Hyperpaper. Hyperpaper is the program that draws the wallpaper. And then I also have Emacs launching in the background as far as the Emacs server, the Emacs daemon. I also have Nextcloud launching, which is sitting up here in the sys tray. And then I also have Flameshot, which I wanted to auto start, but Flameshot does not auto start. It does not open in Hyperland. There's no sys tray icon for Flameshot. And I was under the impression that Flameshot did work on Wayland and specifically on Hyperland. But for whatever reason, I can't get Flameshot to work. I, I did some uh, Googling and apparently there is a fork of Flameshot. It's not actually not a fork of Flameshot, but there's a Git version of Flameshot called Flameshot-Git in the AUR. And that specific package, that AUR build a flame shot should work in hyperland at least that's what i got from the internet but i installed that and still no flame shot so i'm kind of bummed out about that and this was working because there were a few times when i launched into hyperland say like last week where flame shot did actually appear in the sys tray and was usable but not anymore. In the last few days, it has not worked at all. Now, uh, a day or two ago, I did notice there was an update to Hyperland. They're on version 0.45 now, and that did break my old config, which essentially was the default config from 0.44, whatever the version, the previous version was. This section here was the problem. So this is the new code for shadowing, like your drop shadow decorations and things. You need this block here. The old block had different syntax that is no longer used. So uh, be sure if you run into problems with your existing Hyperland config, when you update to 0 0.45, chances are it's this shadow code block that needs to be updated. So that's really all I've done here lately with the Hyperland config. I really didn't play with too much uh, other than obviously adding you know, some of my key bindings. I got all my Emacs key bindings now. I also added all of my DM script key bindings. So I have a submap for that and that's going to be super P plus another key. For example, uh, super P Q 
would be the logout uh, script, dm-logout. Super PM would be searching for a man page, or maybe I want to get a random man page. Let's do random man page. Uh, it picks one at random here. If I hit enter, I'm going to read the man page for this particular program, XV list image formats. I have no idea what that is, but there's thousands of binaries on a Linux system. So you're going to run into a lot of things that you probably didn't know existed when you go and grab a random man page. So those are my DM script key binding super p followed by some other key launches various scripts and i was doing the same thing with my emacs bindings super e followed by another key binding launches various emacs programs now let's talk about the waybar config because i spent more time on that than the actual hyperland config itself so if i look for uh, the waybar config here it doesn't look like i've opened it lately so let me go into dot config slash waybar slash uh, config.json-c is the actual waybar config. And what I did is I went and found uh, an existing config on GitHub. I don't remember where I got it. I, I should give the guy credit, but I just, I, I didn't save the URL. I just went and found a config and I played with it a little bit. This guy, he uh, was using the Nord color scheme. So he was, he had a bar that was colored with the Nord colors. So I wanted to start with something that was easily configurable for me. So the first thing I did, I swapped all his colors to the one dark colors or the Doom one colors or the dark one colors, whatever you want to call this particular color scheme. Uh, most people are going to call it one dark. And, you know, I like this color scheme. It's the same color scheme as my Emacs. It's also the same color scheme that I use here in my Alacrity terminal. So it made sense to theme the bar with the same colors. Other than that, I, I adjusted some of the padding. I adjusted some of the icons. I created some custom modules here in this bar. So the way this works, you have two config files here. You have the config.json-c, and all this is is you tell Waybar what modules you want in each section of the panel. So you have modules left and modules left. The only thing I have is the custom logo module, which is just this arch logo, and then the Hyperland workspaces module, which is the workspaces here. So that is everything on the left side of the panel. Then module center is just empty. I have nothing is as a center module, so I don't like widgets directly centered in my panels. That's just me. I know a lot of you guys love to throw like a clock or something there, or, or even sometimes like the taskbar. You guys like it centered. I don't. Uh, and then modules right, that's where I have everything Push to the right. So this is the system tray, the custom kernel uh, module that I created, CPU, memory, disk free, clock, wire, plumber, and then the custom power button. So the power button here is just a module with the power logo. If I click it, I get a DM logout running, although it's running with D menu. I need to actually correct that and make that run with Rofi. So let me go to the bottom of my config here. So I've got these custom modules. So a custom module is not a pre-existing module that comes with Waybar. So I did custom kernel and then I have the heart as the icon here and then the executable is just run this command you name dash r you name dash r the output from it is 6.11.8 it's the kernel version so that's all that is pretty simple to create your own little custom modules here the custom disk free module is letting me know how much disk space i'm using Custom power is this power icon right uh, this icon here it's actually the little power logo and then on click, it runs my DM script called DM logout, which is a simple logout menu. You can log out of the window manager, you can reboot the system, you can shut down the system, but I need to add this flag a dash R for Rofi because I want to make sure that that program runs with Rofi. Now, I don't think this will take effect until I actually log out of Hyperland and log back in, but the next time I log in, now this when I click it, should actually run the DM logout command. So this will pop up when I click the power button. So that's how that should work. So on Waybar, you have two main configs. You have your config.json-c, which is the widgets. It's the modules, right? And then you also have style.css. So you theme everything using CSS. So you have a separate file for the styling, for the coloring and padding and uh, the border radius as far as you know, if you want these rounded boxes or not, however you want to do it. 
and you can see for example window waybar here this particular uh, CSS code here I'm using uh, 282 C 34 as my background color because that's the background color for the one dark color scheme and then I go in here and just add all of this CSS uh, coloring the, the stylings for the modules here for example custom dash kernel is uh, I'm setting the background color to this particular shade of red and you can see I've got that on the kernel module uh, custom dash disk free I'm setting that to this particular shade of orange and you can see the background color is orange and then you can set things like again uh, padding uh, font font size uh, you, you can do a lot with this custom uh, style sheet that you create. Now, one thing I wanted to do is, you know, with the GTK theming, you know, how did I actually set the GTK theme and icon theme? Because I wanted to use my LX appearance program, which is what I've always used, but this didn't seem to work right inside Hyperland on Wayland. Well, turns out there is an actual program uh, that is very similar to LX appearance, except it is for Wayland. If I do a sudo pacman dash capital S, the program is called NWG dash look. And I've already got it installed, but let me zoom in so you guys can see this particular command. NWG dash look is the name of the program. Now, if I actually launch with Rofi NWG dash look, you can see the actual title GTK settings, adjust the look and feel. And this program looks exactly like LX Appearance, but again, it is for your Wayland compositors, in this case, Hyperland. So there you have it, a little bit of what I've done in Hyperland and in Waybar here in the last week or so. I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I push my latest configs to my GitLab so you guys can go grab my configs if you want them. Now it's not all been smooth sailing with Hyperland on either this AMD machine at my office or the NVIDIA computer at home. The NVIDIA computer at home I will go ahead and tell you that there is one major issue with it that may be a deal breaker for some people. If you're a hardcore gamer, if you're somebody that games a lot, especially with Steam, Steam on that machine at home, I've got an NVIDIA 3060 is the card in that machine. Steam does not run. I try to launch Steam, a Windows pop up and you get this weird kind of flashing. Uh, the windows are completely wigging out where, you know, you just get a uh, window animation appearing disappearing like it's like the window opens and instantly closes and because of all the animations that are going on by default in hyperland you get this weird effect it's almost like a weird light show going on but nothing ever opens uh, now on this amd machine i've had far less issues i will mention that i've recorded like three maybe four videos inside hyperland on this machine in the last week through OBS and I did have an issue with one of those videos where OBS was stuttering really badly it was dropping video and audio to the point where what I was recording was completely unusable and I had to go back and reshoot that video in a different window manager so I don't know if that was a hyperland issue because that hasn't been a problem uh, before and, and I'm watching this video that I'm recording right now inside OBS and hyperland and I don't see any weird stuttering or anything going on so it doesn't seem to be a problem today I I'll notice it if it is a problem though when I go and edit this video here in a minute but I, I that may have not been a hyperland problem so I'm not going to say that's hyperland that could just be you know maybe obs had a bad update maybe arch had a bad update you never know and one of the things with computers is sometimes you run into issues and it's not really easy to spot the program that is the problem now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt James Steve, Armor Dragon, Darloff, Daedalus, GDR, George Lee, Matthew, Methos, Erion, Paul, Peace Arch and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Soul Astry, Tenrin, Ward Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode you just watched would not have been possible. The show's also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work, please consider subscribing to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.